you've been called the CEO of Signals. Signals is a huge principle here for this, you know, in this reactivity world. Um, so Ryan, can you just break down like what are signals for folks who may be completely not familiar? <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. We've gone this far without actually saying that. I know, um, I know, right? I know. We, we suck. I'm sorry, everyone. I'll admit I have no idea what a signal is. Okay. It's interesting, but I have no yeah. idea what's actually happening. Okay. It's, I mean, I, I, it's always hard to come up with the one sentence line for people because whenever I describe it, people are like, oh, so they're an event emitter, right? People are yeah. f familiar with events. But what signals actually are is they are a directed data graph. And it's because you don't just make one signal, you make multiple signals that listen to other signals and effects that run off that. And you basically make a graph, not unlike your component graph that you have when you use you know, a VDOM library, but this is the, about data dependencies. Like hooks even, you know how you have the array in React and then you, you know what that hook depends on. In the case of signals, we use auto tracking, so you don't need that array. And when you access values under a scope, it creates a dependency, which means whenever any data under that scope uh, updates, that thing will run again. And the reason signals are interesting these days is because they come with guarantees. They execute synchronously. They make sure that on any given change, they only run once. They This offers a level of predictability, um, which we might have not happened be before. You, you, you don't have this problem with things bouncing around. Um, you don't have this problem with like, uh, you know, updating two things and then like part of it propagates and then part of it propagates again and it runs twice. Like things are batched together, they run in a reasonable order and you get a system which is all concerned about how data propagates through your, through your application. Mm -hmm. And if you've heard of this before, a lot of state libraries, even in React are kind of, are signals libraries, things like MobX, you might've come across this, you know, in the past um, when you're, you're managing state in React. But the reason that people are interested in it right now, and this is largely from the influence of Solid, um, and we'll see what we can talk a bit about the further impact of it, is the idea that basically you can use this whole system to manage all the rendering in a very obviously performant way, but also a very understandable way. Um, it's easy to see, compose, not have to worry about re-renders and et cetera. And um, this comes with a lot of benefits that are, I think perhaps more obvious to say framework authors at first, but then once people start, you know, authoring with these patterns, they start, you know, being able to almost make sense of their apps easier with this model. Yeah, that makes sense of sense. And it's, uh, thank you for that wonderful explanation.